This is it. This is the laser lamp review video. I've been wanting to do a lighting review video for years and the people that have gone out camping with me and helped me record these videos, and I'm talking like, you know, two, three years ago. And this is how reviews start. Uh, you're out with a bunch of mates, you'll like shine your spotlights across a paddock or something like that and you look at who's got the best lights and all that sort of thing. That's exactly how this started, but it took years to get to this point because I just didn't find the light that I wanted until now. So uh, we ended up getting uh, pretty much all the big brands. We got the lights in, uh, the reps gave them to us to test. Um, so at that point we didn't, hadn't paid anything for them and that's the disclosure there. And um, we tested them all. And we shot, basically sat on um, that end of the car park and we shot them down onto that wall down there which is about 100 meters or so. And we just assessed them all. Um, independently as <laughs> all the mechanics in the workshop and we came up with what was gonna be the best over and under a thousand. All right, let's go show you some fancy things about lights in the bush, and then we'll get back and talk about Just have a look at them. Could there be a better design light for a TIL patrol? Look at the line and the grill just like matching up perfectly. Like it just wants to happen. Laser lamps actually came to me over a year ago and said, oh, I want you to try our lights out. And I said, well, do you make a nine inch round one? No. And so I said, well, that's what we put on cars. We're not putting light bars, except for angel graded light bars on, onto the car. And I said, when you've got a nine inch spotty, come back and see me. And that's exactly what happened. And we did trial them for free, but then I bought them set so I could put some on my car. So these are purchased and I've got skin in the game on this. And um, they're brilliant. My background before I did all this full driving stuff was um, essentially uh, heavily involved with lighting. I'm an optical mechanic by trade. And I've worked in spectacle lenses, freeform lenses, multifocal lenses, um, which are all single lens things. Then I've gone into microscopes for like in theater, if you're having, you know, ENT or an eye operation. And then after that, uh, it's it designing lenses which go into your eye for cataract surgery. So I've been talking about light for 22 years before I got into this full drive thing. So I understand a little bit about, um, about <laughs> the applications of light and spotlights too. So if you go into a shop and talk to someone about lights and so forth, and they start spurting out numbers at you, like basically fact dumping. Oh, one lux at 1500 meters, uh, five and a half thousand Kelvin uh, lumens and 15,000 lumens. That is all BS and they're a bad salesperson um, because pretty much all of the lights these days kind of do all of that. Um, like LED technology is really good but you can buy good LEDs and you can buy bad LEDs. So laser lamps will use, say you make, I don't know, 100,000 LED chips. The top 5% of them are offered to like the premium brands like laser lamps and you know, they get the, the exact color. So they use about a 5,000 Kelvin for the nerds in the room. Uh, and it's not that like bright white, it's like a an off white. It's not yellow, but there's, and there's a purpose for this, and I might as well go into it now because um, I'm going to go and record, um, go on a love day tonight, and I'll record some um, images showing you the difference between five and a half thousand K and five thousand. And essentially, it just gets, it's a little bit yellower. Um, when you've got a light that is too white, uh, you'll find that. Uh, it lights up all the atmosphere. So if there's any dust in the atmosphere or anything at all, it'll really uh, highlight that and um, it'll end up, uh, you see the beam of light going down the road opposed to the light falling on the object. And that is what I've really liked about these laser lamps is um, you don't get this feel of hot spots um, or brightness, 
but everything that you want to see is illuminated, um, even if it's you know far in the distance or off to the side. And I know some effort has gone into the reflector technology here. Can you see, I hope the reflection isn't losing it, but there's all these little facets to the reflectors in here. How close can I go and focus at the same time? Um, uh, a lot of lights will have a freeform reflector, which is like an egg cup, shaped differently at the back to the front, which means it's like controlling the beam. These do that, but also with these facets. So as the light hits the um, this, this edge here, it's almost going 180 degrees. And that's why you get such a wide light out of them. Functionally, the idea is to go for a light which, um, uh, you know, street signs, uh, they like just light up so bright is because all the light is focused forwards and on them and they're trying to get two kilometers down the road i don't find it's as bad with these lights because um there's such a broad array it's almost like a 180 degree radius from the car around getting the lighting out and there's no hot spots it's homogenous the whole way around so the light is shared on all of that sort of real estate and even the way the reflector controls the up and down light. So it basically goes 10 degrees above the horizon and 10 below the horizon. So you're not wasting light trying to light up the koalas. You may notice I've been running the laser lamps on the front the last few videos. I had some other lights and I've been trying lots of lights. So if you go back over all my videos, you'll see different lights on the front of my car. But I've been running the road vision uh, light on under my roof rack, so 40 inch road vision. And that was the best uh, light that featured under $1,000. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to show the contrast. So me driving back from the Sydney 4x4 show a few months ago, uh, across the Hay Plain, I decided to do it at night, four o'clock in the morning sort of thing. And um, I've got a great little video, which I'll show you now, which compares um, the color of the light of the road vision, which is um, five and a half thousand K, uh, compared to 5,000 of the laser lamps. But also, usually you'd go for a light bar because of the spread. And I was really surprised by this because the laser lamps actually had more spread, like what I could see out to the side, than the light bar on the roof. That was very, very surprising. So I had more width and I had more distance and it was a better temperature. I actually end like there's nothing wrong with that light bar at all, but I actually ended up turning it off because my eyes filled more natural using the the color temperature of the laser lamp it really did feel like i was looking at the object opposed to uh seeing the the, the whiteness of the light hitting the road in front of me uh, for, so for long distances like if you're a truckie or something these are the way to go all right here's the warning here's the sales pitch coming if there's anything worth putting on a Y62, like I will not accept free sponsorships, but I'm happy to buy it if it's worth putting on there. And I'll also, if it's good, I'll do a review like I'm doing now, and I'll put it on the website. So yeah, if you want a set of these laser lamps, um, dashoffroad.com.au, go have a look. We'll have them on there somewhere. And I'm gonna start investigating the rest of the laser lamp range, like their light bars, and see if they're as good as the spotlights too. Hope you've enjoyed this review. That's it for this one. Um, I'm going to do lots more of this stuff. You'll see me next time on, U on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.